You know, as Sir Chris mentioned earlier, tremendous pressure has fallen to finance professionals that are joining us this afternoon. You know, whether or not you are addressing the uh, effects of COVID-19, the, the related disruption, and ultimately the changing role of you as a modern CFO, we interact in a financial climate that some may call volatile or ambiguous, right? It has become increasingly complex for finance professionals to make efficient credit decision. And again, to impart and share what we have learned over the years at CRIF Philippines and to speak about how to prepare for the shifting role of finance managers, please welcome to our digital stage, Ms. Sab Hoxon. Hi, Sab. You. Ms. Sab Hoxon, if for those who are not yet familiar, is the Regional Operations Director for CRIF in Asia. She manages and oversees the operation of our presence in multiple markets, such as here in the Philippines, in Malaysia, Singapore, Indonesia, Vietnam, which serves Laos, Myanmar, and Cambodia, as well as Taiwan. Is that all the markets, Sab, that you're, that you're overseeing and managing? So far, yes. <laughs> <laughs> and obviously, Sab has been instrumental in the development of Crip Report for Philippine companies about Philippine companies. So take it away, Sab. This, the uh, stage is yours. Again, thank you so much, Arden. And thank you for inviting me here today and allowing me to be part of this event. Uh, let Again, thank you so much for this invitation and allowing me to be given the opportunity to share our latest uh, BI offering, which is the CRIF report. Let me start by sharing a study that was actually conducted by our partner, DNB, in which um, they interviewed and surveyed CFOs coming from different industries and from various um, sizes, big and small enterprises. So from this survey, they were actually able to find out that their roles of CFOs and credit managers have actually evolved. Now they are not only responsible for financial operations of the business, but they are now responsible to drive the enterprise growth strategy by building profitable relationships. This is the new mandate and, you know, as CRIF DNB, we are here to support you in this new role as modern CFOs to achieve these goals, such as delivering operational excellence, finding new opportunities, and shaping new business models. And at the core will be data and analytics, which DNB, CRIF DNB, as you all know, is very passionate about because as shared by Sir Chris earlier, we have already 80% coverage in terms of the Philippine companies. In terms of customer onboarding, this is where we, you know, we create um, creating building relationships. This is where, you know, we start creating profitable relationships and building structures and processes for client onboarding might be different. Like for small enterprises, requirements might be different. Processes might be simpler, but, you know, one thing would be common for all sizes, like due diligence is a big part of this process. We all know as credit managers and CFOs that we would try and evaluate and assess our customers, our potential customers in line with the five C's of credit. And it will take a lot of activities to be able to complete this assessment. First would be data capturing. You know, we would always ask the question, what data is important for us? What data is critically needed to be able to make that decision or to help our credit managers make that decision? What data would be easy to get? What data would be hard for us to capture and acquire? Apart from that, we would need to, you know, verify each data point from different data sources. Like, for example, uh, we do check the internet for information for news about the company. We would try to do interviews coming directly from the data subject or from our sales people. And then we also try to gather um, document requirements 
just to ensure a complete assessment in line with the five C's of credit. With our CRIF report, we hope to answer all of these questions in line with the five C's of credit. Now, if we want to look at the character of a business, our CRIF report actually includes content about the company contact details, registration details, start date, import and export transactions, employee size, current investigation, which indicates and shares information about the interview verification that the team has made when they called out directly the data subject, registered charges in which as CRIF DNB, we have a database for checking negative records based on civil and criminal cases, related companies, we call it the family tree or the linkage information, wherein we include all related relevant details about the company's parent, branches, subsidiaries, and affiliates. This will actually let you know if there's any other opportunity, especially for sales, um, to tap business into to grow revenue. And we also have information about shareholders and shareholdings as well. Uh, management as well as directorships that any officer might have. Legal structure and registration, we want to ensure that, you know, this potential customer that we are dealing with is legitimately, you know, uh, existing and registered in the local registry. Employee size, so we want to be able to see how big or small the company is and news. So for news, we try to gather information on the current events in terms of the business expansion strategies or acquisition activities. And another five C's of credit that we want to be able to check um, is the condition of the company. So in line with this, part of our CRIF report is to provide you information on the activities and operations of the business other product lines, as well as um, any other brands or products that they are carrying. Next would be imports and exports. So this is actually a good indication as well as to the size of the business, because it actually shows you if they have export and import transactions. So it would tell you if they have customers outside of the country, and that would you know help you provide that additional information to make that assessment for their credit limit estimations. Next would be, of course, financial information. We offer the balance sheet as well as the profit and loss statement as part of our CRIF reports. This, of course, actually provides us um, a condition, the condition as well as the capacity to pay of the data subject or the potential customer. And of course, the risk evaluation which is the CRIF score, which I'll explain later more in detail. It actually provides us the, the credit limit as well as the strengths and weaknesses of the subject company. And of course, for capacity, commitment, and collateral, we look at the ratios so we can see the trend of the business. For our CRIF reports, there is a historical presentation of the balance sheet the profit and loss statement, so you can see the trend um, of the growth of the data subject. And then we also include um, bank information as it relates to the loan transactions and any banking transactions that the company might have. Capital and equities, as well as payments reported. This is actually very important and something that we are proud to have because currently we are the only ones that have this type of information. This is actually coming from payment information that we have collected from different um, companies in the Philippines wherein they submit their accounts receivable with us. We aggregate the information and anonymously um, present that information in our CRIF reports. So this content will actually 
provide insight on the payment performance, how slow, how fast, is it within terms, is it beyond terms, in terms of the payment that this company pays its suppliers. So that is a quick, I mean, it's not very, I, I know it's not a, it was a little bit extensive in terms of the content of the PREF report, but that is the information that you will be able to get inside our CRIF reports. And talking about the challenges that I mentioned earlier, like data capturing, getting all the required documents and verifying from multiple data sources. So our CRIF report actually answers, you know, lets you forget all of those concerns because you have everything in just one source, in just one CRIF report. Our CRIF score, Part of the CRIF report that you will be also getting is intended, you know, for us, for you as CRIF, as credit managers and as CFOs to be able to predict the probability of financial stress outlook of a company in the future. You know, it guides decision makers such as yourself by providing transparent and independent evaluation of the risk reflecting the performance and stability of a business. You know, earlier you saw an extensive um, picture of what the CRIF report content looks like. And with all of that information, you know, it doesn't help if, you know, sometimes it's so overwhelming to have that kind of information. It will only make sense if it will make you um, as CFO and credit managers make a decision. So our CRIF score, CRIF score actually aggregates all this information and all the relevant data and insight to help you make the decision and the analysis and evaluation that you need for your organization's growth. Our CRIF score is actually built based using a statistical model based on um, Philippine companies that we have actually covered 80% in the Philippines based on the latest figure of the Philippine Statistics Authority. You know, with CRIF's experience for more than 30 years in the business information industry and the technology coming from the analytics team in terms of the latest AI and machine learning tool, we were able to empirically create our own CRIF score. Also, to be able to, you know, um, gain additional control over the modeling workflow, we had to define rules and exclusions to make sure that, you know, um, the CRIF score that is um, computed and provided in our CRIF reports are accurate, reliable, and up-to-date. So we were able to identify that, you know, some exclusions would include establishments without a specific or defined line of business, government entities, entities coming from the banking and financial industry, companies that are inactive or out of business, and newly established companies would not be able, we will not be able to provide any CRIF score. The CRIF score actually combines financial information and non-financial information. For financial information, we look at sales, profit, assets, liability, equity, and revenue. And for non-financial factors, we look at number of employees or employee size, primary industry or line of business, and legal structure. All of these factors are then fed into the machine learning base scoring engine, which in turn will churn out a CRIF score. This score is actually um, a score, a three digit score, ranging from 300 to 900, that indicates the likelihood of having growth of revenue and profit margins. The higher the score, the better, meaning lesser risk. Apart from the CRIF score, we have also included credit limit estimation. So this actually allows decision makers to understand the maximum credit exposure estimation for the company. 
It may serve as a guardrail for commercial transactions as well. Please note that you know credit limit will only be available for companies that have submitted financial information with us. Apart from that, we have also included a score tranche, which varies from A as very low risk to E as a very high risk in relation to the CRIF score. We have also included score factors in which we have identified areas of strength and areas of potential improvement. So this actually helps the, the company, you know, provide some insight into which areas they would need to improve on or which areas they would need to, you know, sustain and continue as they strive for growth and a healthy, stable business. So let me end my presentation by leaving you with a few questions that you and your team might want to reflect on. Am I harnessing all of our knowledge and insights to drive enterprise-wide growth? What is our current structure? Will this structure be able to help us you know, progress by being a financial steward to becoming value accelerators for the organization? What are the changes that needs to happen? Remember, we are here as CRIF DNB to empower you and to support you as modern CFOs. So let us know how we can help you. And thank you very much, Ms. Sav, for the very interesting and insightful presentation. So just a quick question for, uh, for Ms. Sav. So the report that we have provided, some of the data elements that was there, obviously that is something that, um, I mean, data that Griff mines, right, and produces and publishes in our report. But not to limit or not to say that these are not information that our attendees this afternoon can't get for themselves. Is that correct? So if I'm a finance manager, say, for instance, of company A or company B, I can do my own research and due diligence in terms of um, my processes and framework for evaluating customers. Is that right? That is correct, Arden. So if you are a small business, a small or medium enterprise, then you may want to start you know, gathering documents coming from SEC for corporations or you know, checking for business registration through the online BTI BNRS. So that could be a start if you just want to check the legitimacy of the potential customer that you are dealing with. Aside from that, there are also, you know, um, you can get information directly from the data subject. You can do interviews. Um, you can also acquire additional information through news, um, websites, right, or articles. And that information can, you know, can help you make a decision and evaluate your potential customers um, better. Right, but I could imagine that it may take a lot of time and a lot of resource infrastructure on the side of the finance team to be able to build uh, a single report. I could only imagine if, you know, a, a small to medium sized company managing a portfolio of like, say, 100 to 150 uh, customers on a per monthly mm -hmm. basis I mean, and the resource that that entails to be able to cover those extensive research. I mean, uh, again, a lot of questions for you during our panel discussion, so we'll see you in a bit. Mm -hmm.